Hey, welcome everybody. It's Corey, Safety Man, safetyman.co, at Safety Man on all your social media. Today we're going to talk about a couple different carry methods. You know, it's getting loose out, it's getting summertime, people are wearing shorts, t-shirts, tank tops, and we get a lot of questions on social media about the best way to conceal a firearm when you're really, really dressed down. So here, just got a t-shirt and some gym pants. How one way would I carry my firearm? as I said in the preemptory video to this, would be appendix carry. That's where you're carrying the firearm just to the left or just to the right of your belt buckle, just depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed. The pros to that is very easily concealable. Most people can't tell that I have a firearm on me. It's not that difficult to get to while you're in a motor vehicle. But just understand, if you are in a motor vehicle and you get into a motor vehicle crash, where does that seatbelt press right against that firearm that's up against your stomach? So you could create some injuries that way. So just keep that in the back of your mind since you spend a lot of time in your vehicle. And right now it is legal to carry a, a concealed firearm in your vehicle, providing you have the appropriately issued permit and you're not going to a restricted area. So some of the pros of the appendix once we reach and grab and clear that weapon, we get the firm and funnel grip, pull the weapon out, and we can come right on target, come back, scan for additional threats, check the weapon, make sure it's good, clear the holster, look at the holster, one-handed holster, and back up to the ready position. Okay, from the side, would that would look like, hey, stay back, I don't want any part of this. Clear the holster, draw the weapon, present it to your threat, stay down, don't move, come back, clear the weapon, check for additional threats, when you're sure your threat area is clear, clear the holster, look at the holster, holster the weapon, come back to that international ready position, that de-escalatory position. So that's what it would look like for an appendix carry. So remember the positives, it's easy to get to, it's easy to reholster with one hand. It's very difficult for somebody to disarm you because most people don't look there for it. Some of the negatives are, again, we do have that firearm pointing at a very uh, important part of our anatomy, especially for a guy. So we must make sure we practice good safety protocols and that finger is indexed the whole time we're drawing and the whole time we're reholstering. So notice when I say draw the weapon, weapon comes out, then I get on target. When I come back, check the weapon, scan for additional threats, clear the holster to make sure I don't have any of this stuff in there that could hit the uh, trigger. Clear the holster, look at the holster, smooth to the holster, reconceal, come back to that ready position. Holstering should be the slowest thing you do. Stay safe, train now. So carry method number two, which is usually the most common carry method, a little bit less concealable depending what kind of firearm and holster you use. I'm using a Glock 19 simulated it's not an actual firearm, it's a laser printed firearm. It has no working parts. It cannot fire any live ammunition. And I'm in my basement and there's nobody in my backdrop. I'm practicing all the safety rules just so I could show you a couple of things. So I'm carrying it right here in a Black Hawk Serpa holster. It offers some retention. It's not gonna survive a two-handed vigorous gun grab as someone's trying to disarm you. But if I fall down, I get in a wrestling match, something happens, I slip and fall, that gun should stay retained on my side. So again, the drawing procedure is going to be exact same, except for doing it in the front. I'm going to do it around the side, okay? I'm in that international de-escalation position. Hey, stop. I don't want any problems with this. Call the police. Call 911. Somebody videotaped this. Stay back. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. We need to vigorously clear the holster. Draw the firearm. Come out, get on target, do what we need to do, stay down, don't move, come back, clear the weapon, clear for additional threats. When you're sure your threat area is clear, clear the holster, look at the holster, smooth to the holster, reconceal, back to that ready position. From the side, it would look exactly the same. Hey man, I don't want any parts of this, stay back, you're scaring me, just let us leave. Call the police, call security, somebody videotape this. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Clear the holster. Draw the weapon on target, do what you have to do, stay down, don't move, come back, clear the weapon, check for additional threats. When you're sure your threat area is clear, clear the holster, look at the holster, smooth to the holster, reconceal, 
hands back up to the ready position. Look at my stance. I'm in a ready fighting stance. It's all the same. So if this turns from physical to deadly force, back to physical, mechanical, spray, whatever it is, my body is ready. You're not going to tackle me. You're not going to take me down. I am ready for you, whatever you want to bring to me. Okay, just because you have the gun doesn't mean it's going to start, stay, or finish as a gun fight. Why do I look at my holster? People say, why do you take your eyes off the threat when you reholster? Well, it's no longer a threat. If you remember, I cleared the holster, drew the gun, engaged the threat, stay down, don't move. I determined that was no longer a threat before I came back, checked my gun, make sure I didn't jam it. I didn't shoot all my rounds out of it. It's not slide lock, broke, stove piped, something's wrong with that, double feed. Once my gun is good, then I'm scanning for additional threats. Once I'm sure my threat area is clear, I want to make sure I don't shoot myself and go from a hero to a zero. So I clear that holster, look at the holster, smooth to the holster, back to the international ready position so I could do it all over again if I need to do. If the police show up, I'm like, calm down. Hey, that guy's a bad guy. That guy had a gun. I'm a concealed carry holst holder. My weapon's on my right side. Tell me what you need to do, officer. Tell me what your pleasure is, and then don't move. Be ready. Train now. All right, so one of the third, hopefully last, types of Concealed carry weapon holders that we're going to talk about is off-body carry. Get a lot of questions about off-body carry. People run around with shorts and t-shirts and tank tops or no shirt. And they still want to carry their firearm, their wallet, their cell phone and chapstick and gum and breath mints and all the other things that you want to carry. That's great. I'm the same way. I got tactical pens. I got all kinds of crazy things that I can defend myself if I need to. All right. So you always want to have additional weapons because not everything is a deadly force type of a situation sometimes you might have to use something a little different than that have my little neck knife right here in case somebody gets real close to me and i have to use that to defend myself okay so off body carries just exactly what it says it's a holster okay i'll have the link to the description in this thing it has all kinds of pockets in it pocket in the back where you can hide your money so it's almost impossible to be pickpocketed there's a pocket in front i have a nice uh, switch, a uh, assisted opening knife in here, pocket up here for a wallet, ID, pocket up here for perfect for your cell phone, and so forth. Inside the uh, mechanism, okay, we have the, the holster for the gun. We have elastic for extra magazines. We have another one for an extra magazine and one for a flashlight or a tourniquet, whatever floats your boat. I recommend that if you're going to be in the business of potentially taking life, you should be in the business of potentially saving life. So a tourniquet, stop the bleed kit is something you, you definitely want to think about carrying. Okay, so it just slips across, right across like that, and it kind of hangs in the area. It's not really obtrusive, and it doesn't scream like tactical black with all kinds of molly gear and everything on it. Okay, with a full-size gun, this is just a plastic laser-printed gun. It's going to be a little bit more weight into it, especially if you carry one or two extra magazines, a flashlight. I'd get a rechargeable flashlight. It's a little bit lighter, and it uses the same power cable that your iPhone uses, okay? So now I need the gun. Hey, stay back, stay back. Hey, somebody videotape this. Call the police. Get security. Get a manager. It's not my fault. I'm really sorry. You, you win. My bad. Let me just get out of here. It's not bad. I'm so sorry, okay? And I need to get the gun. I got to get to this strap to release... The, the, the tension on. So I pull that down hard, pull the gun out, get to my threat, address my threat, stay down, don't move. Come back, check my gun, scan for additional threats, innocence in the affected area, law enforcement, whatever, check myself for injuries. When I'm sure my threat area is clear, then I can safely holster secure, lock it in. So it goes right in the holster, and then I can go ahead and zip it back up. Now this one came with little zipper handles on it, these little uh, loops. I cut them off because I found that they were getting in the way when I was reaching for the tab, okay? So you see these little loops here? I cut them out of the way. I'm never gonna need to get my wallet, my phone, or anything out in a super fast emergency. So I left them on there, but I didn't want them to get in the way of me grabbing this thing and actually grabbing this in an emergency. Okay, so that's why you see it look differently like that. Okay, so they come in different colors. I have the link to the description where you can uh, purchase it. Just got it right off of Amazon, maybe 25 bucks. Okay, so again, 
Okay, if I'm facing this way, hey, stay back, stay back. I don't want any problems. Call the police. Call 911. Somebody videotape this. Get a manager. It's not my fault. I'm so sorry. I need to grab the gun. Open it up. Gun comes out. Push it to your threat. Engage your threat. Come down. Stay down. Don't move. Come back. Check your gun. Check for additional threats. When you're sure your threat area is clear, oh my God, I need another magazine. Have another magazine in here. Magazine in. And then I'm ready to go for another however many rounds you're allowed to carry in your state. Okay? Drop that magazine when it's empty. Holster when I need the holster. And then I can go ahead and zip it back up. And come back to that international ready position and wait for law enforcement to survive or get out of the danger area. So that's off-body carry. The biggest downfall to off-body carry is when people do this. They take it off. They're holding it. They let somebody else hold it. They put it on the back of their chair when they're at lunch. I've watched enough videos, been a cop for a long enough time where I've seen too many of these things get stolen. Purses, knapsacks, backpacks, laptops, everything. If it's not attached to you, consider it gone. Consider it stolen. All right? So, off-body carry should really mean on-body carry. Attach it to you so you don't lose it. Stay safe. Stay ready. Train now.